Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take a standard bone rig character in FBX format and import it with separate FBX motions. I'm going to use the Templar Knight character that's included as bonus content with 3D Exchange 5. First, I'll just click and drag in my T-Pose FBX. If the character you're using doesn't have a T-Pose, you'll need to create one before you import all the other motions. Here, you'll see a notification that you can access the embedded textures at the source path. If I go back into Explorer, you'll see that a directory was created with all the textures in it. This is where the program can access all of your textures temporarily, while still keeping a relatively small file size. The next thing I want to do is import in my other FBX motions. I can do this before or after I've converted to a non-standard character, as the T-Pose and motions have already been calibrated. To do this, I'll just go to Import in my Motion Library and import the files. There's an option for how many frames you want per second in the motion, and also another setting that helps to create smoother animations between motions. Once those are imported, I'll just go ahead and convert my character to a non-standard character. Now this character was created with the Character Studio biped template, but you'll see in my hierarchy here that the naming of my different parts contain underscores between the words. Certain programs may do this automatically, which is why there is a 3ds Max biped type 2 option for the automatic bone mapping. If you use the first type in this situation, the bones with underscores in the names may not be recognized automatically. So I'll just select type 2 and move on to my floor contact settings. You can press Ctrl Q to switch to orthogonal view, which puts your grid at right angles when you change the view from front to side. The F hot key will go directly to the front view. You can see that there are turquoise indicators where your character's feet and hands are set to contact other objects. Make sure these are in the proper place before you move on. After that, you can go to the property panel and move to the side view by pressing the A hotkey. Here you can modify the hip and foot offset of your character's T-pose if your animations are a little off. Check out our tutorial on ideal T-pose for more on this. After your T-Pose is set up, you can go back to the Bone Mapping tab and run through some calibration motions. There are upper and lower body calibrations that will let you know right away if your character's bones have been mapped properly or not, and if your T-Pose is correct. Once you're satisfied, just press Convert, and you'll see a notification letting you know that all of the motions in your motion library have been updated according to your latest T-Pose. Remember, 3D Exchange also contains bone mapping templates for 3DS Max, Human Maya IK, and Daz Genesis. If you want to make further modifications to your T-Pose after converting, just select Convert to Non-Standard again and refine your T-Pose like in the previous step. You can see all of the motions in my motion library here, which are now in iMotion format. To test out your character before exporting to iClone, you can just go to the Character section and select Apply to iClone. This will bring your new avatar directly into iClone. I'll go back into 3D Exchange briefly, and you can see that if I double-click my motions, that they will preview in the work window. I've currently set Loop to On, so they will repeat. You can apply your motions directly to any character in iClone by using the App Link feature and selecting Apply to iClone. I'll apply two motions here, and you'll see when I play back an iClone that there have been two motions added to my character's timeline. Back in 3D Exchange, I want to add all of my motions to the Perform Editor, which means they will be available in my character's right-click Perform menu, as well as in the Custom Motion Library. I'll just select Add All to Perform to do this. Next, I'm going to officially export my character with the motions. You'll need to make sure that the Geometry and Animation boxes are both selected. You also have the option to embed external texture. If you do this, your character's file size will become significantly larger. If you leave it unchecked, the texture files will be accessed from a path directory. Okay, so after that, I'll just go ahead and export my character. Back in iClone now, I'll be able to find my character in the Custom Actor tab. I'll just import him in, and then go to my Custom Animation tab, find the Motion folder I created, and apply my animations.
If I right click on my character, I can activate them more easily by using my perform menu like you see me doing here. Now remember that I decided not to embed my character's texture during export. If I ever change my mind on this, I can go to the Skin tab in the Actor section and take a look at my texture maps for all my character's parts. You can see that all the material swatches have a little chain link on the bottom right, which means that they are linked to an external directory and are accessing the maps from there. I can press the little folder button to go to that directory and see all the files there. Now, if I decide that I want to delete that directory and instead embed the texture maps in my character, I can simply press the Embed Texture button and you'll see the chain link disappear. This means that the material is now part of my iAvatar file and will make it larger. The key is to find a good balance between your computer's processing power and the size of your iAvatar files. If they're too large, it may hamper performance, so just be aware. So that's about it. Go out there and try it for yourself.